let's look at life at Iowa State College through the eyes of a young athlete. These former high school stars meet with Ray Donald's personnel director, who acts as counselor and campus father to all Cyclone athletes. Let's hear what Ray's telling them. I congratulate you fellows on being here and on the fine record you have made in high school. I know you wear the award sweater of your school with real honor. You represent fine schools, and some of you represent a whole conference of fine schools. Your parents and friends from those schools will watch your progress here with real interest. You have met the test put to you by athletics, and you are better prepared for college because you have participated in competitive sports. You will need to make many adjustments with each other as you live here together. But as you learn to respect each other, you will make many new friends. These fine looking youngsters live together in West Stadium dorm during their freshman year where their activities are proctored by Maury Schnell, varsity fullback, and Sterling Singley, top flight baseball star. You'll be hearing about such youngsters as Emory Eichhorn, Marshalltown, Wayne Baszler of Cedar Rapids, George Hike of Tipton, Bob Olson of Red Oak. But now let's get back to Ray again. As a representative of the athletic department, I challenge you to take off the high school sweater now and go out and win an Iowa State sweater, the honor sweater of your class, just as soon as possible. After that challenge, Ray starts telling the boys about football, getting ready to introduce them to head football coach Abe Stuber and his varsity staff. Varsity staff is shown here checking a problem of alignment as they make plans for the coming football campaigns. Campaigns your young stars will be a part of in another year. One of the keenest defensive minds in football, Stuber is constantly working to get a bit more of a bulge on Iowa State opponents. Cap Tim coaches the backs for Stuber during the fall and is head baseball coach in the spring. Across the table from him is Burt Moore, the line coach. Every man on the squad is a line prospect as far as Bert is concerned, even fellows like Bill Weeks and Melvin Melling. Herb Cormack directs the play of the Iowa State ends. The varsity squad heads for Clyde Williams Field with Cormack still looking for ends. Football isn't the only fall sport at Iowa State. Track coach George Bretnell times Gene Shaver of Sigourney at the finish of a workout. Shaver, a great cyclone runner, always placed high in every meet. One of the top bands in the nation. That's this brilliant collection of brightly dressed musicians known as the Iowa State Marching Band. Under the direction of Frank Pearsall, the marching band wins its game at every halftime performance at home. Then once each year it follows the Cyclone Squad into action on foreign fields to let other thousands see its precision maneuvers the great collegiate game of football, most colorful of all sports, thrills these young stars too. As the Iowa State team comes into view, it's the signal for these effervescent cheerleaders to spring into action. The crowd comes to its feet to greet its team. And the band plays, and the student body rolls out the words of the Iowa State loyalty song. One of the most familiar radio voices in the state is that of Dale Williams, WOI sports announcer. Dale brings a full program of sports activity to every corner of the state. One of the best in the business, Dale adds great color to all Cyclone games. Iowa State opened the season by stopping Dubuque 64 to nothing. Long runs by Jerry McGlynn and Don Ferguson highlighted that game. It takes lots of planning to make a football trip work smoothly. Here, business manager Merle Ross and his assistant Irwin Christensen go over travel plans for the football team, checking routings for the Cyclones on that trip to Champaign. They've done a lot of work to arrange things so that these fellows arrived on the time at the scene of the game. One of the highlights of the 2020 tie with Illinois was this touchdown run by Melvin Melling of Rochelle, Illinois. Even the dog wanted to get into the act. And here's the young fellow who scored the vital 18-yard touchdown. Driving and fighting all the way, the Cyclones battled back from a 2014 deficit to run the score to 2019 on this touchdown scored on a quarterback sneak by Bill Weeks. Then Joe Brubaker calmly stepped in to kick the extra point and tie the game. 
Joe is now seeking further football honors in Canada. But offense was not the only thing that helped the Cyclones against Illinois. In this series of plays run by the Illini, the Cyclones were back down on their own four yard line, but refused to give up that tie. On fourth down, Jim Doran broke into the Illinois backfield to spill Kruger for a loss and to get the ball for Iowa State. Top performers in that brilliant goal line stand were a pair of Sioux City players, John Tillow, a tackle from East, and Vince Beacom, a center from Trinity. Down at Lawrence, Kansas, the Cyclones continued their fine string of football, defeating the Jayhawks 19 to six. The first score came when Bill Weeks passed to Bob Engel. Not long after that, the ball again went to Engel, who rolled and raced 51 yards to the one yard line. Iowa State counted its second score one play later. Angle, a fine all-around back, had one of his greatest days at Kansas. Bullet Bill Chauncey also had a pretty good day at Kansas, ripping the Jayhawks to pieces and finally coming through with this brilliant 43-yard run. Chance was one of the best fullbacks in the business during the 1949 football season. At Colorado, in a driving rain, the Cyclones won 13 to six. Top performer that day was Rod Rust, whose brilliant blocking from his center post opened the way for the great running of Angle, Chauncey, and other Cyclone backs. Kansas State was the homecoming foe, and there was plenty of color in both action and preparation. The housing decorations for the 1949 homecoming event again showed the fine, inventive, and constructive genius of the American college student. These decorated sororities, fraternities, and dormitories are the college homes of hundreds of students, and they represent their share in the homecoming color and pageantry. You can imagine the work involved for these college women in collecting the material for this very clever job of decorating. Homecoming wouldn't be complete without a queen. Here was the pep queen for 1949, Miss Marjorie Slorby of Minot, North Dakota. Escorted into Clyde Williams Field in a sporty convertible, she watched the game from a special throne in the East Stands. There she saw this touchdown scored for the Cyclones and like the rest of the crowd was on her feet, singing and cheering with the band. Liz Brookhart of Washington, D.C. is one of a dozen or more acrobatic cheerleaders who direct the vocal activities of the Cyclone football crowds. There was more football that day, too. Iowa State winning 25 to 21. Mark Rothaker moved into early action when he intercepted a pass and carried it 27 yards to score for Iowa State. Mark was mainly a defensive back last year, but the one-time Ames star also knew what to do when he got his hands on the ball. The third Cyclone touchdown of the game came on a pass from Bill Weeks to Jim Doran, covering 15 yards. That was the fifth of seven scores for homecomers. Missouri stopped the Cyclone winning streak, but one of the real bothersome Iowa Staters was Don Ferguson. Ferg's defensive play that day prompted Missouri coach Don Ferro to tell him that he was mighty glad he was graduating. High praise for a fine back. At Oklahoma, the Cyclones tried to stop that long victory streak belonging to the Sooners. It wasn't in the cards, but Bill Weeks passed for 281 yards, probably a record against Oklahoma. The only Cyclone score came in the second half on a pass to Jim Doran, the play covering 87 yards. 
During that game, Dorn collected a total of 203 yards of passes to set a new national record in that department. Weeks and Doran were given special blankets by an avid Iowa State fan to commemorate their great play. At Drake, the Cyclones won 21 to 8 after trailing 8 to 7 at one time. This touchdown series put Iowa State ahead to stay. After alternating with Bob Angle and a pass to Doran, Bill Chauncey drove over for the touchdown. Another rainy afternoon greeted fans for the Nebraska game. A return punt for a touchdown gave Nebraska a 7 to nothing win over the Cyclones. Big star of the game for Iowa State was Dean Lawn, later elected captain for the year. He is now football coach at Spirit Lake. Burl Taylor, head trainer and superintendent of grounds, checks the gym for graduation exercises. Ray Klotwike, who starts coaching at Knoxville this fall, helps him. One of the most popular spots during the winter for these freshmen is basketball practice. Head coach Chick Sutherland and Bob Lampson, freshman football coach and assistant basketball coach, send the Cyclones through cage drills during the 1950 campaign. Iowa State no longer plays its games in historic state gym, using the armory with its greater seating capacity instead. Football coaches aren't the only ones who have to diagram strategy for their players. Here, Chick and Bob are working out a play for the Cyclones to consider. You'd think coaches would see those circles and X's in their sleep, wouldn't you? Well, believe me, they do. Louis Menz and Harry Schmidt meet with a fine array of former Cyclone stars now coaching in Iowa. Here are Ken Wells, athletic director and football coach at Ames, Ron Norman, basketball coach at the same school, Harley Rollinger, athletic director and football coach at Webster City, Vic Weber, football coach at Clear Lake, and Russ Dickinson, swimming coach and assistant to Harry Schmidt. Men like Larry Owens, athletic director and football coach at Boone, often bring their problems to Louie to take advantage of the experience and knowledge of the Cyclone Director of Athletics. There's lots of activity under the direction of these men. Harry Schmidt is director of intramurals, tennis coach, and counselor for physical education majors. Russ Dickinson coached the 1950 swimmers and serves as assistant to Harry in all other fields except tennis. Inspection of Lake Laverne took their attention here as the winter sports carnival neared. The midwinter carnival brings out the top skating talent in school in all fields. A big part of the show is the sculpturing contest in which all dormitories, fraternities, and sororities take part. There's not only a lot of constructive thought given over to the planning of these exhibits, there's a lot of fun behind the puns and ideas of these college youngsters. That quick flash of aquatic action was Bob Brown, Roger Watts, Malk Schmidt, and Ed LaBerge, great cyclone freestylers. Sam Schiffler won the Big Seven diving title three times for the Cyclones. Here's a simple dive for you. Sam will do another simple one. 
Like to try that one yourself? Just so you won't forget that you are seeing this picture through the interested eyes of those freshman athletes, here's Ray again showing them a picture of Glenn Brand, the great Olympic wrestling champion for Iowa State. Glenn and his coach, Hugo Otapollock, enjoy some fine moments from the bomb, the college yearbook. Bob Wilson is the 136-pound champion of the Big Seven. The 1949 NCAA golf tournament was held on the beautiful Iowa State College course. Some of the nation's greatest young stars played in the meet. Now this character is Harry Burrell. All these young freshmen like to get a look at him, too, even if they aren't certain that he knows a field goal from nothing. His job is to let the newspapers and radio stations of Iowa and the nation know what they'll be doing at Iowa State. To him, they'll give their entire life history one of these days so he can be ready to supply the answers when newspapers and radio stations of Iowa and the rest of the country want to know who's who here at Iowa State. Of course, the big reason such an unimportant guy gets so much footage in this picture is that he directed it. Seriously, though, there's a lot of work cut out for him. Like this, for instance. Don Webb, the 1950 golf captain and runner-up to his brother Jack for the 1949 Iowa amateur title, had just completed a mighty hot practice round. One good enough, evidently, to inspire a news story. That copy, which will be coming out of the typewriter soon, will go to the newspapers and radio stations all over the country. Papers like these that Ray Donalds is showing to his freshman stars. And stories that will, say, someday be about fellows like you and you and you, Ray says. Maybe he's pointing to such men as Ralph Bartleman, football and wrestling star from Chicago. Or Jim Robertson, former great weight man and football star at Ames. Bob Olson, all-state guard at Red Oak, who wants to be all Big Seven someday, too. Truck Scheiber, football and track star from Oak Park, Illinois. Claire Russi and Emery Eichhorn of Marshalltown, who want to become part of the basketball and football tradition at Iowa State College. That's Pete Sangali of Three Rivers, Michigan. He's a halfback. Virgil Byerly, state half-mile champ from Boone, wants letters in both basketball and track. Jack Kozad, he's the big one, is another Red Oak product and a tackle. His buddy is Wayne Baszler, former punting star from Roosevelt of Cedar Rapids. That's Raleigh Arns, all-state center from Waverly. Frank Conjardo of Murfreesboro, Illinois, is looking at the books here, but he's got an eye on a halfback spot on the varsity, too. Bob Rockwood of Duran, Wisconsin, hopes to take over one of those regular tackle bursts next fall. George Hike is mighty serious about advancing the fame of Tipton along with his own here at Iowa State. He's a guard. Gene Taglapetra of Highland Park, Illinois, can play some fine end. He caught lots of passes last fall. That's Dan Rice, who can play most of the backfield spots. He's from Clear Lake. Sam Long is telling Ray Donalds that Ottumwa has another fine basketball team, but that he doubts if it will be able to handle Davenport, which ought to make Sam a mighty fine prophet. Well, meeting's adjourned for the night. These young men will go out now to dream of a day when they are in those varsity uniforms instead of watching other stars perform for the Cyclones of Iowa State. Yeah.